because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Live on the zone this Saturday. Go on. Say, can we just have, can we title this Umar and Radio Raheem beef? Because no one saw. It's a bit of an exaggeration. What, what? That would be a lot for you, wouldn't it? Have an exaggeration. But it was literally, I'm next. No, I'm next. I thought it was actually going to go off, but IFL got the nod. I was fighting for you. Yeah, yeah thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, live on the zone, but also on the Sky platform, 429, Virgin, uh, live in bars, pubs. Um, how sort of, how much of a boost is that for yourself? Massive. I mean, look, we, we, we knew it was coming. Um, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes. And of course, you are up against the conversations of, oh, it's an app. They're not on Sky. They're not on, you know, they're not in pubs. And we tick that box now. You know, Channel 429, you can watch AJ and, and your entire DAZN schedule on Sky, uh, on Virgin, uh, in pubs. And there's going to be a lot of additional announcements to be made soon. So they're really, you know, in terms of reach, in terms of availability, there's no argument to be had. We already know it's the best schedule in boxing. And now, very accessible to people that might prefer to watch it uh, in that capacity. You do thousands of interviews on a fight. Would you say Sky miss you more or do you miss the Sky platform more? What I mean by that is the Sky Sports News, the half five kickoff that pushes the fight. Yeah, that's a tremendous platform. I mean, of course Sky miss me. You know, the boxing content has, has gone off a cliff. And, you know, to the fight fan, obviously with my profile and a private profile of Matchroom, Everybody knows they, they miss us. Do we miss their platform? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, I think they're a great platform. And what we're doing is we're increasing our reach, we're increasing our availability to bridge that gap. You know, we're never going to have Sky Sports News and, you know, maybe the Premier League, but at the moment, Premier League matches that you can bolt onto. But we've been there before, Umar. You know, we've had the usage of that. And at times, it wasn't really available to us. What you're seeing now is. Um, a big push from them to utilise those outlets and I think they're doing a great job in that respect in, in terms of pushing their boxing. For example, if DAZN did have Premier League rights, Joshua was a bit different because he's a, a superstar but you've got Cordina Rakimov, a brilliant fight. If DAZN had a half five game, a Premier League game and were pushing Cordina Rakimov, how much of a, a help would that be to you? Of course, everything's about subscriber base, you know, and the reality is on Saturday night, the zone are going to increase their subscriber base by 300, 400,000, right? So all of a sudden, the zone subscribers, in terms of the number of subscriptions, is going to be in an unbelievably healthy place. Do you think they'll stay? That's what we have to make sure they do. At the value of 9.99 a month, you have to look at it and say, if you are a DAZN subscriber and you are paying, you've committed to the period and you're paying 9.99 a month and you're getting Anthony Joshua on Saturday as part of no pay-per-view, you're getting Jesse Rodriguez the week after, you're then getting uh, potentially, if you're in the UK, Tank against Ryan Garcia, you're getting Rakimov against Cordina and a great card from Cardiff as well. Then you go into May and you're getting Canelo Alvarez against John Ryder. You're getting Katie Taylor against uh, Chantel Cameron. We've got another massive show that we're announcing May 27th as well. All part of your subscription. What we have to do is we have to keep planning ahead and keep detailing the schedule so that we always have those moments that give you value for money. And I believe right now we're giving unbelievable value for money for subscribers. And uh, I believe they will stay. Not everyone will stay, of course. But whilst you have those moments, whilst you say to subscribers that, that bought on April the 1st, if you stay another month, you get Canelo Ryder. You get our massive show on May 27th. You get Katie Taylor against Chantel Cameron. You ain't going nowhere. Eddie, it's April, uh, the weather's not too bad. Is Joshua not a stadium fighter anymore? Could you have gone to a stadium for this? Not really in April, not against Jermaine Franklin. I mean, he's coming off two defeats. Um, it's been a lot that's said about the tickets. We have less than 200 tickets left. It will be a complete sellout by this afternoon. I definitely expected them to go faster. They were expensive. I mean, the gate, the last time Joshua boxed at the O2, this gate is about 20% more in terms of revenue. So whether that was a, a point or whether the fact that it wasn't, you know, a, a known heavyweight or a British heavyweight, 
uh, that he was fighting, maybe that affected it as well. But it will certainly be sold out. And you know, someone said to me today, who owns a box at the O2, you know, I was in negotiation for people to buy my box last week. I could have sold it 20 times over from the start of this week. The, as you see. The media attention has been huge and it will continue to grow to fight night. Who's the bigger draw now then, Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua? We say draw, you say who makes more money or like, you know, who conducts the bigger purses? Tickets and pay-per-views. Tickets, depends who they're fighting. You know, I think if Tyson Fury was fighting Jermaine Franklin, I think it'd be a similar night, but he's definitely on a good run. I don't know how that popularity would have waned over the last couple of weeks, but he's a big star, Tyson Fury. I mean, Chisora fight wasn't one we wanted to see, but it's still sold out in winter. Still, still a household name in England. You know, I mean, with all due respect to Jermaine Franklin, I know he boxed Dillian White in November, but, you know, he's, he's not uh, to the man on the street. He certainly doesn't have the same profile as Derek Chisora. And Tyson's on a great run. Don't forget, Tyson's coming off a Deontay Wilder win, a Dillian White win, and then Derek Chisora. So, um, or, or going into that fight. And AJ's coming off two defeats. So, you know, I think both big stars, but need each other and you know AJ is the only one that can go and do those big site deals um, as we've seen and the only one that enables people to make career high paydays really. Now um, there was a, a mail, uh, an article in the mail that Jeff Powell ran, um, I saw some comments from yourself saying that we're ready to exchange contracts yeah. with Queensbury for Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua should Joshua win this Saturday as early as next week. I mean is that realistic? Firstly, quotes in that story did not come from my mouth. Really? Secondly, it was a conversation that I had with Jeff Powell, who I love by the way, at the bottom of an elevator going up to the red carpet. He had no dictaphone, he had no, and all I said was this, we already had a deal in principle for that fight. I'm talking about the structure of the deal. I've had, say multiple, I've had conversations with George Warren on a very brief level where I've said to him, if AJ wins on Saturday night and you don't fight Usyk, which obviously that's not happening now, we would like to try and get that fight made. What George said is, if this goes to the fighters, I don't think anyone will believe this fight will get made. So get through Saturday night and we'll talk and we'll work behind the scenes to see if there's a chance that fight could happen. If AJ goes in and destroys this guy, the entire nation will say, make AJ against Fury now. No mandatories, there's nothing in the way, get it done. But we'll see what happens on Saturday night. But most of what was said in that article is actually incorrect. I think he said that I said, we're going to exchange pilot contracts on, I don't even know what a pilot contract is. Have you spoke to Jeff about this? No, I saw him over there. I love Jeff, but I mean, it was literally a conversation here. And I, you know, and I never said we're going to exchange contracts next week. I said, we've already got a deal in principle. I think we could get that deal moving but it would require a lot of work behind the scenes, probably quietly, which I'm not very good at, with George. Well, I know their side, uh, in terms of Frank and George, weren't happy about that, but if you haven't actually said that, then... George, George phoned me. Like, this conversation was had at about 5 p.m. By 7 p.m. it was in the Daily Mail, right? George phoned me. He said, what are these quotes all about? I read it, I said, I never said that. I said, but what I did say is, we had a deal in principle, we'd like to pick up those conversations and try and make the fight. And he said, fine. But he knows that if we go about it the same way as last time with the fighters screaming and shouting on it, or one fighter screaming and shouting on Instagram, and even AJ biting, it's not going to get done. Coogan spoke to Derek about, you know, Fury, Joshua, and the potential of that, and he said, you need to shut the F up. Um, Saudi are going to deal with it. Did you see that? And what do you think of Derek's comments? What, the king of Saudi? Derek. Um, yeah, Derek's got some strange comments. I mean, you know, ultimately, we're the exclusive promoter of Anthony Joshua and uh, he would insist that we conduct all the business around his deal. So yeah, obviously um, Derek's got his Saudi hat on, but we'll see what happens. The conversations to make that fight will be made between myself and Queensbury. Have you seen, um, obviously Joshua said on Monday that Wilder Fury Joyce are the three fights that he really wants to have before he ends his career. Frank's come out today and said that uh, Joe Joyce can be made in the summer. Obviously, Joshua wins this Saturday. Joyce beats Zhang on April 15th. Is that something you could look at? I think he should definitely be in the mix for that fight. I think Joe Joyce is definitely a top 10 heavyweight in the world. Some might argue top five. Um, AJ has sparred thousands of rounds with him. He actually is quite excited about that fight. It's not as big as Tyson Fury. It's not as big as Deontay Wilder. I don't even think it's as big as Dillian White. Might be, similar size. But I think if he couldn't get Wilder or if he couldn't get... 
uh, Tyson Fury. I think he'd definitely consider um, Joe Joyce. Eddie, just uh, away from this, obviously you were looking at June 3rd in Abu Dhabi. Reports emerged about Chris Eubank Jr. v Conor Ben. Robert Smith come out yesterday and said that it would be disrespectful to the sport. He's not sure he'd approve of that fight. Obviously Eubank Jr. is a, a license holder with them. So your reaction to that? Yeah, wild really from Robert. I mean, I've never, I've never heard so many public comments from the board regarding disciplinary matters. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's bizarre that he wants to have control in a, in a foreign jurisdiction that ultimately would be sanctioning in Conor Ben, a fighter that doesn't have a British Boxing Border Control license. And if he wanted to try and stop the fight for Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank would have the option to himself fight under the jurisdiction where the fight is taking place. You know, someone just asked me a question. Oh yeah, when when Lux and you know when when Frank Warren did the fight with David Hay and talked, you know, through the Luxembourg Commission, it was very similar. I said, what are you talking about? I said that was where a foreign commission have come into the Britain to stage an event basically in the jurisdiction of British Boxing Border Control. This would be an international fight that would be sanctioned by the relevant international reputable commission. So you know, I think uh, one thing I keep saying is I keep saying I want to get everybody together. But right now, Conor Ben is out of control in terms of his opinion on the board. The board have completely lost the plot. I do not believe that the board would give Conor Ben a fair hearing at the moment. Is that why he's not handed in that document, that 200 page document? He, because he's going for a legal process. There's, there's no. There's no appeal, there's no hearing, there's no reason for him to provide that document. I want to get to that position. But right now, the way the board are acting and the way the Conor Ben are acting, I'd, I'd, it's just complete madness. So Can you not get them together? And that's what I want to do. But at the moment, Umar, you've got Conor, Conor Ben then reads today, the board are basically saying, wherever you choose to fight around the world, we're going to try and, you know, we're going to try and ruin it and make sure you can't fight anywhere in the world. He's gone absolutely berserk. It's another legal situation. It's like... It's, it's, it's constant step backwards, but the good news is, and a, you know, a little mini exclusive for you today, you will be able to watch this all, and all this kind of stuff unfold right in front of your eyes on the big screen very soon. Last one, sorry to bring up Derek yeah. Chisora again, he actually spoke to Radio Raheem behind you and said that it's because he trains in the matchroom gym yeah. that he's getting away with it. Your thoughts on that and Derek's comments? He's a complete and utter prat sometimes, Chisora. And I'll tell him again, I mean some of the things he comes out with, and I love Derek, and like we've had some great relationships, but sometimes he's got to watch what he says because he's an idiot. Sometimes, and I tell him, you know, you're a brave man. He's not here, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time, Eddie. Cheers. Fuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, well I, I never shot up, up Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17, win it their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 